Welcome to worship, friends. God bless you this evening as we gather to keep our eyes on Jesus as we have throughout this Lenten season. I welcome you in Christ's name. God bless you. A couple words about our evening worship. The first is you're going to need a Bible. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 14. And you're also going to need a copy of the Apostles' Creed, whether uh, you need to look that up online or pull out your small catechism. Feel free to gather those items now. Hit pause and come on back to worship here in just a moment. Now, what would any good worship service be without a couple of announcements first? Friends, first need to tell you about some great news. This last Sunday during our blood drive, it was a record turnout by faith members. You heard the call to bless our neighbors, and you did it in mighty ways. And so thank you for being a part of that important mission that we participated in and caring for those in need through giving of your very blood. God bless you. Thanks for doing that. We thank God for you. Our mission with Feed New Mexico Children continues. We heard this week that there's a need for food and for food distribution this Friday. So the food that you've donated is becoming once again, another blessing to children throughout Albuquerque. Pam Lemke is leading that up, and she'll be helping us distribute a few food this Friday. So God bless you for being a part of that great ministry. As we continue to find creative ways to serve God, whether we're at home quarantine or working together in groups far less than 10 or 10 or less, uh, we'll let you know on our faithabq.org website. We want to continue uh, being faithful, being safe and healthy, but serving our neighbor however God gives us means to do so. So look for that on our website. You can also be part of our mission through uh, your financial gifts on our giving tab. Feel free to click that on faithabq.org and continue to give to the mission of Faith Lutheran. Well, with those announcements, I hope you've got your Bible and your Apostles' Creed. We are going to gather now and come under the name of God for whom we live and breathe together by His grace. And so we gather this evening in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's begin by listening to God's Word together as a reminder of the hope that we all share in Christ in this service of Word and Healing tonight. Hear these words from the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 8. These are words from God for us. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. With that promise, let's pray together. Almighty and merciful God, our only source of health and healing, who alone can bring calmness and peace, grant to us, your children, a consciousness of your presence, a strong confidence in you for our pain, our weariness, and our anxiety surround us now, Jesus. And so with your care, protect us by your loving might and permit us once more to enjoy health and strength and peace by turning our eyes on you, Jesus. And so we put our hope in you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God bless you, friends. We continue this service together by knowing that we are Christ and we are His. And so God has made us His people through our baptism into Christ. And living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I invite you to do so now with me using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
and the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen and amen. Our gospel lesson for this evening comes from the gospel of Matthew chapter 14. I'll be reading beginning in the 13th verse. Oh, excuse me, I'll be reading from the 22nd verse. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowds, and after he dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea, but when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. And he, came, he said, Come. And so Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. But when he and Jesus immediately reached out his hand, took hold of him, saying, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when he got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son, of, the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, the storm didn't go away while it buffeted the disciples. The storm didn't go away when Jesus walked on the water and sometimes the storms we face don't go away either in fact the storm didn't go away when jesus invited peter to come out on the water with him and i want us to remember that this evening in the storm that we are facing and the fear that many of us are feeling even the disciples were afraid they cried out in fear they screamed they were terrified and yet Jesus didn't flee from them when they doubted. He didn't flee from when there was a storm. He didn't flee in the midst of that dark night, those hard days, and he won't flee from us now. Now, Jesus did, however, invite Peter and invite the disciples to not keep their eyes on the storm, but to keep their eyes on him. Did you notice what happened? When Jesus started taking a look at the storm, the wind, the waves that buffeted, he began to sink. Now, Jesus didn't go on to give him a lecture right at that moment about, well, Peter, there you are sinking and drowning in your fear. Oh, disciples, there you are screaming off the boat. Let me give you a lesson. No, what did Jesus do? First, he immediately reached out and saved him. Then he corrected him. Jesus in grace and love, when our eyes betray us, when our eyes deny Jesus and turn to our fears instead of the love of Christ, God is gracious and he forgives. When Jesus uh, predicted in Mark chapter 14 that Peter would deny him, he eventually would actually, by God's grace, reinstate him. He knows that sometimes in our fear, we will sin and turn our eyes away from him. But he immediately, by grace, for all those who call upon Jesus and come to him, reaches out and rescues us, reaches out and forgives us and restores us to his presence. Friends, Jesus doesn't flee from the storm. And sometimes these storms, they don't go away so quickly. Sometimes, instead of calming the sea, he invites us out on them with him. Whether you are in a storm of loneliness and self-quarantine, whether you're in a storm of fear of wondering if you or your loved one are going to get sick, whether you're in a storm of wondering what this means for your finances, whatever storm that might be hitting you in this day, in this season, remember, whatever it is, Jesus will not flee. And he, as we said yesterday, is with you. He's with you. He's with me. Now look, I'm human just like you. 
Just like the disciples were, sometimes we do get afraid. And so we need to be reminded again and again, as the scripture does in 1 John 4, 18, perfect love casts out all fear. Now, it doesn't mean all storms go away, but it does remind us where to turn our eyes, to turn our eyes on Jesus. And when we do that, then we're capable of sharing his love, his peace, his hope with others. As you did so boldly with the blood drive, as so many are with Feed New Mexico Kids, I know that God will use you in mighty ways through prayer and supplication, through coming together in spirit and in truth. God is going to use you, whether it's in the quarantine of your own home, maybe that's the occasion for you to find ways to love others. Maybe it's through Facebook or multimedia posts like these, or maybe, I don't know yet, there are all kinds of creative ways God are, is going to find to use us to love our neighbor. I invite you to look for those opportunities to share the love of Christ because Jesus doesn't flee from you and we're not going to flee from loving our neighbors. Friends, Peter sunk. You might feel like sinking. Remember, Jesus reaches out his hand when you're feeling like that to immediately save you and remind you again of the truth of his word to turn your eyes on him. I invite you to do that tonight and to do that together as a family, to do that in prayer, to do that by God's grace. Amen. As uh, we continue worshiping God and come to Him in this time of service to Him in word and in prayers for healing, I invite you to turn in prayer with me now. And so as I lift up these petitions, I invite you, as I say, and all God's people can say, I invite you to say, Amen. And so let's pray for our friends and neighbors and for one another now. Let us pray for all who suffer. Merciful Lord, you sent your Son to be our peace. Help all who suffer pain or grief to find in him strength and peace and put their trust in your promises and may they be renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all God's people can say, Amen. Let us also pray for the recovery from those who are dealing with sickness. O oh God, through the strength of the weak and in the comfort of suffering, we ask that mercifully hear our prayers and grant to your servants, whom we name on our hearts and on our minds now, that you would bring the help of your power that their sickness may be turned into health and our sorrow into joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, all God's people can say, Amen. Let us pray for those who are suffering from affliction. Almighty and everlasting God, comfort of the sad and strength to those who suffer. Let the prayers of your children who are in trouble rise to you now. And to everyone in distress or anxiety, grant mercy, grant relief, grant refreshment. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, all God's people can say, Amen. And let us pray for those who are ministering to the sick, who are ministering with the gift of healing. Almighty God, source of human knowledge and strength, guide physicians and nurses and med techs and all those you've called to practice the art of healing. Strengthen them by your life-giving spirit that by their ministries, the health of all people may be promoted and your creation may be glorified. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, all God's people can say, Amen. Let us pray for the ministry of family and friends. Loving God, our Creator, Redeemer, give strength and gentleness, patience and faithfulness to family members and friends gathered in their homes. Let their hope be in you. By their ministry of love, let your love be known through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all God's people can say, Amen. Let us pray for all those who desire our prayers. Blessed Lord, we ask for your loving care and protection for all those who are sick in body, in mind, or spirit, and who desire our prayers. Take from them all fear and help them put their trust in you, that they may feel your strong arms around them. Touch them with your renewing love, that they may know the wholeness in you and glorify your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all God's people can say, Amen. And so we pray together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are praying that our Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, would send his Holy Spirit upon all those who are sick and drive away all sickness of body and spirit and make whole that which is broken. We are trusting in God who loves us to do this, to calm the storm that we face and remind us to turn our eyes onto him for he is with us. And so receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, turn your eyes upon Jesus and he will never flee you. And however long this stormy season may last, we will remember that Jesus is with us. God bless you. Go in peace and serve the Lord in your homes and wherever you may be. Amen. Thanks be to God. God bless you this evening. We'll keep bringing these opportunities to worship together to you online in the days and weeks ahead. Amen and amen. God bless you, dear friends. Mm -hmm.